Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Oxymoron. No, not really. Happy Monday. Good to see you. All right, let's see who's here this, this Monday. It was a beautiful weekend for us here in Connecticut. I hope it was a good weekend where you are. Um, this weekend, I was at my mom's house, which was nice. I hope you were able to catch um, Friday night, our, our monthly bingo game. I did it with my mom, and it was super fun. It, the theme was Brenda's Great Idea, the calendar days, the special days of the calendar. It was a super fun game, and I think we had five winners in total. Um, so that was exciting. I like this new formula for our bingo nights of having um, 60 calls and 12 cards because it, it typically makes, so far, mathematically, uh, one winning card, which is kind of exciting. It's a big win. Um, but anyway, good morning, Linda B. in New Jersey. It's great to see you. I see the sun shining in your flower. That is that is just how this is just how it is here too, and I hope it lasts. Good morning, Catherine in Idaho. Good to see you. Good morning, Mom. I loved being with you this weekend. It is super sunny and bright and nice. It feels like spring is in the air. It really does. Penny, good morning. Bright and sunny in North Carolina. Happy Monday to you, too. Robin, good to see you. I just sent one of your things out. I have your other kit coming, your primitive one, but I wanted to get, what was the other thing? This watch is out to you. I'm sending everything piecemeal. I like to make sure things go and you get uh, surprises in the mail. Good to see you, Robin. And Sheila, oh, Robin sat outside and continued cutting up t-shirts. What a great thing to do. That is, I can't wait to get back to my t-shirt project. I really can't. I had to move forward with some other stuff and I'm just waiting for that window of being able to work on stuff, whenever that is. But I've got to carve it out, right? I mean, that's what you do. You have to make the window. That old saying, um, I'm sure I'm going to screw it up, but it's something like there's just enough time in life for everything that's important. So you choose the things that are important to you, and then you have to make time for them. It's just what you do instinctively, and it's what you want to do. And I want to work on some more t-shirt stuff. I want to finish that project I got going. So you got to keep me updated on that. Sheila, good to see you, Benton City. Oh, it's a beautiful day. I hope it's a beautiful day for you, Sheila. Congratulations on your win, by the way. That was exciting. And your niece, Donna Davies, good morning. Oh, and you're saying hi to Catherine, too. We missed you in Zoom. Hopefully you can Zoom this week. We're going to be Zooming on Wednesday. I'll give you that information tomorrow. Janice, good to see you. I hope you're doing okay. Teresa, great to see you in Ohio. Glad you're there. Anita, you had a day out with your buddies the other day, right? Good day, everyone. It's cool but sunny up here in London, Ontario. Went to see the Tundra Swans uh, in Strathra yesterday. Got some nice pictures. Ooh, I don't know what those are. I don't know what the Tundra Swans are. I'm going to have to Google that or else you post the pictures and I'll, and I'll learn. That sounds like a lot of fun. Amber, good morning. Great to see you. Kirsten, great to see you. Beautiful in Vermont. Oh, I bet. House's windows today. Let me scroll down. I got some crazy thing going on here. Windows today while waiting for delivery. Oh, great. Oh, Kirsten, I'm so glad. It should be there. Let me know if it's all okay or if there's any trouble. Always let me know. I'm right here. Martha, good to see you. Sunny and warm in Ontario. Joan, good to see you. Good morning from Jamaica. That's right, Joan. You're in Jamaica. Sunny sitting outside and enjoying the cool breeze. Oh, that sounds like heaven, doesn't it? Beverly, good morning in Washington. Blue sky. You're here at the beach, but it's supposed to rain. Well, that's okay. You stick stick out there at the beach as long as you can and, uh, and then roll with it, right? There'll be so many good days coming up. Chrissy, good to see you. I got your message. I'll send you some uh, pretty swirly colors for your stash. Bingo night was fun. Heather, good to see you too. I loved all the painting you were doing this weekend. That looked like fun. Uh, got a three-year-old. I may just, oh, <laughs> yeah, you might be in and out. You're going to be busy during the next half hour. Cindy, great to see you in Arizona. I'm glad you're there. Happy Monday. April, beautiful day. Good morning. Good to see you, April. And Anne, good morning. Good to see you, too. We did have such a great weekend. It was really, really fun. We have five-second delay before we can hear you. Okay. Oh, interesting. So, Linda, does that mean that when I'm live, there's an ad and you still can't hear me for a while? Oh, that would be... Um, that would be important info. These are things I, I never know. Let me know if that's the case because then when I log on live, I'll wait a few minutes, uh, fix my hair or something like that, and then, and then come in five seconds later. Interesting. Oh, man, technology. Uh, Carol, good to see you in Utah. 
You should be getting that rug, Carol. Let me know when that comes after a week of hiking. Oh, very nice. Yes, please, thumbs up, like, share, comment. Anything you can do to keep the videos lively. Uh, Invisible is great. Linda, good morning in Massachusetts. Good to see you. Cynthia, good morning. Great to see you, too. Happy Monday. Happy Monday, Suze. The Carbuncle Pond Kit is out for delivery today. Fantastic. This is kind of a new thing, isn't it, with the USPS, US Postal System? Um, when they tell you something's out for delivery, the first few times I saw it, I thought, what does that mean? Uh, it means it's like on the way to your house, which is kind of, I mean, I don't remember this happening years ago. This is like a new kind of, um, a new bit of information that they give. They're more and more forthcoming as time goes on with showing pictures of your front porch and telling you the actual status of your thing. It's really nice. So I'm glad Car Carbuncle Pond is almost there. I'm going to send those emails out today for the people who are taking the class this week. That'll be super fun. Susan, good morning. Good to see you. Oh, thank you, Cynthia. Uh, Cynthia, bingo was super fun. Super fun. And Susan says, clearing up near Olympia, Washington State. Oh, very nice. Very nice, Susan. I'm glad you can take a break. That sounds very busy. Lori, it's raining in Texas. I bet tomorrow will be a better day, though, right? At least it's not snowing. We're getting there. Oh, happy Monday, Lori. Looking forward to learning about, yeah, we've got a big felting today and punching in denim, Cindy says. You know, that reminds me, let me finish, um, I wish I had like a mental chalkboard that was a bit more efficient, you know. Uh, don't let me forget about the denim. I want to respond to that too. Karen, good morning in Stratford. Good to see you. Okay, Linda, thank you. So I will do that from now on. When, thank you for letting me know. I always blow straight in. Um, I will do a little delay because it's doing an ad. How funny is that? All right. Is he already? Yep. Okay. I see. That's pretty uh, schizophrenic, right? I'm already talking to myself by the time you can see me. Um, all right. Thank you. I'll remember that tomorrow for sure. Those are the things I really like because they really help me shape the episode better. Oh, okay. Karen, you got your first dose of vaccine. Yay. I'm so happy to hear that. I'm getting my first dose on Wednesday. I'm so happy to hear every time someone gets their first dose, second dose, we are getting there and we are getting closer to being able to spend time together and visit and travel, plan things again. Uh, more on that too. Oh, okay. Give me. Yeah. I don't know if it'll give you the skip out at the beginning. I don't know. That's interesting have to keep up with Amazon. That's right, Lori. So listen, before I forget, the word denim just cued me. Um, I'm not, I'm not, sh I, I'm not sure if it was the same person. Cindy, I don't think it was you that put the comment on, um, what is it, YouTube. Somebody wrote this weekend a comment and I said, uh, to please be in touch again. It was something, oh, good morning, Karen. Good to see you. Hello to Noah, if he's there. Um, it was, a, it, was, um, it was a comment on a video that was very positive and friendly, and it said, um, also, can you do a video on punching into denim? And I said, sure, I'll definitely do a vis video on punching into denim. Um, and she said, because I'd like to do some punching into denim for some foster kids, you know, make them some nice sort of personalized things. And I thought, that is so nice. We should be thinking as a group, um, you know, with spring coming and just feeling better, making time for the things that are important. Um, we should be thinking about projects that we can do or projects that you're already doing that with this platform, we can find each other and maybe join in and help on the same projects. I thought, what a great thing to organize something, you know, for foster kids, that personalizing denim for them, doing little punching projects and stuff. That might be something that more people want to participate in. I would like to, I would like to help out with that. I will make time for something like that. If you have a project that you're doing or something that you've thought of, um, something charitable or something for the community, something that's kind, um, please let me know because it could be that using this platform, whether it's a regional thing or something that people can do and ship, that we can get organized together, give it a shape together and become a little bit more efficient. There are always people looking for projects to do, particularly smaller projects, uh, and doing something nice for a nice cause is something we all feel good about doing. It's the right thing to do. So please let me know if you have those ideas. I would love, I will make the time to help uh, get there with, with sort of publicizing them and, and giving them a shape. Um, the winery in Waltham says they're going to have food trucks. Oh, good news, Karen. We have a winery in a town nearby is called um, Wallingford. That is super fun. They have this huge, vast, I think I mentioned it before. It reminds me of the Pennsylvania countryside, this huge vista. You know, it, it seems to go on for eternity. It's like heavenly out there. And they have a bunch of wines that you can get and sit outside, also inside. But right now it's nice to sit outside with things kind of right in between um, safe and not. 
Um, so that is good to know. Thanks for that info. You know, I should like them on Facebook so I can find out interesting things like that too because that's a great place for us to go and meet each other. Oh, Ralda, you're there this morning. Good morning. Good, no good morning. Nice to see you. You're the denim person, Cindy. Okay, great. You want to make some purses for girls. Cindy, let's talk about this. Um, if you have time to email me on ribboncandyhooking.com, it might be that other people in our group would like to help help you with that project. It's a noble project and it's worth doing. Um, I was speaking to my mom. It was months ago now, Mom. We were talking about starting up a mentoring program when things are a little bit more open and trying to match up people who had a little bit of extra money to, to buy or at least contribute to like a frame and a hook. Um, for like older kids who wanted to get into hooking, um, get them kind of set up because it can be a costly endeavor to embark on. Um, but for people that are a bit more set up and more sort of stable with their finances, if we're able to sort of pair people together and get mentoring, um, get it going locally, I think it would be a great program to get younger people involved in punching and hooking and helping them get this basic supplies that they need to get going. So all of these thoughts that you're having to, please communicate them because we can work together on this. Um, Avery, I, yeah, it should be, everything should be accessible. Art should be completely accessible. Ideas are free, inspiration is free. Um, and so many people have time, so many people are still at home. And um, yeah, this is good if we stay organized in this way. Tundra Swan Pictures, oh, you're sending them via messenger, fantastic. Judith, good morning, beautiful day. Reaching the 70s. That sounds almost too hot. Doesn't that, isn't that ungrateful to say? But it, it's, it was so hot this weekend in the high 60s. I am so glad, Judith. That sounds amazing. Great, Cindy. Thank you. Need um, a small needle using floss. Yep, for the denim punching. So, all right. So let's start at the beginning here because I've got a bunch of things to tell you. And then I'm going to go into the needle felting. I'll probably go over today um, because saying good morning, which is not something I'm going to give up, takes a little bit longer every morning. And I'm very glad for that because that means that you're there. Uh, and I like it. I like it when you're there. I just want to be sure I say good morning. So a couple of things. Um, I started this weekend working on the mark before we go into the felting um, and Nesa Russo. I just want to do two orders of business. So I started working on the monthly kit and I knew that I would do more than one. Yeah, it's that's the Russian um, needle punching, which is the much like the ultra punch um, as a brand, as, a, as opposed to like the Oxford punch as a brand. Um, I was working on the pattern for the monthly kit for April and I am putting the pattern out, but I'm not putting it out as the monthly kit. I think it is too... I know a lot of beginners take the monthly kit, and I think it's uh, a bit too complicated. This can happen. I trip myself up all the time. I'm still devoted to this pattern, but um, I have another one in mind. So let me show you what I mean. I was working on this idea. I drew a picture for this. Um, I wanted to do this kind of industrial wire tree, and I drew it. I like the idea of mixing it. I know it's Easter coming up so soon, and I didn't want to do something full-blown Easter, so I wanted to do the wire tree, like a little bit of a rusty wire tree, a little bit industrial and unexpected for April, and then put on it all of these beautiful, I have a few books by the same authors on these beautiful Ukrainian eggs, um, which to me, they're used for Easter, but we also hang them on the tree for Christmas, So, and I often have them up year-round. So to me, this was kind of like, the idea of Easter without going full blast bunnies and pastel colored eggs. I thought this is more of a year round fun thing. So I went in this direction. I want to look at this book in the future because the symbolism in these eggs, we've talked about symbolism so many times on our coffee times that are more sort of inspiration themed. And the symbolism is so important. Just hearing what a symbol is sometimes can inspire you. A design just pops and crystallizes in your head. So I want to talk more about these eggs and the symbolism, the Ukrainian symbolism to them. And then I started uh, working on it just last night for a little while. I put the bunny ears in the corner and I was thinking about lamb's tonguing around the edge. But I put some pretty um, detailed eggs. And the idea for me, I think I dropped the key sheet, the idea for me was to, um, what a ding dong, right, right here. These are some of the eggs that I ended up transferring, some of the designs that are on the tree. And again, I want to talk more about the Ukrainian eggs uh, later this week, uh, just as an Easter motif or an inspiration design. But I did, I, what I wanted to do is, you know, I never do these beginner kits for people who uh, like to hook very thin, very small, very, you know, th number three, number four. So I cut the background to a number five in a kind of a dove gray. And thanks, Penny. 
and then I am cutting um, all of the eggs to a number three, and you know I never do that. Um, unfortunately, Tattered Flag is still sold out of the Sissix trays. It's very fast for me to use the Sissix trays when I'm making tons and tons of kits, so that is really hard. But anyway, um, I'm gonna cut those to three, so it's this kit is not for everybody. It's, it's a little tricky to do that really, really narrow number three wool strip. Uh, but I'm still going to put the kit out. I'm going to work on it. I'm super enthusiastic about it. I just don't think it is the best beginner kit I could have um, come up with because it's it's a bit fiddly. So I was drawing another one, and I lost that too. That's great. I am on fire this morning, huh? Um, anyway, I'll show you later. It's something a bit simpler. Here it is. I was drawing it on the table and changed it about five times. Uh, a teacup with, I thought for spring, Easter lilies, uh, one Easter lily and two daffodils, I thought for early spring. And I was drawing a Delft pattern on the teacup that holds them, and I just switched to a storybook college cottage instead, like one minute before we went live. So this is gonna be the central motif, a lot simpler than it looks, in a stained glass look, um, not using gray, but probably use, uh, not using black, but probably using the dove gray again. And around the edge, like a broken mosaic, like many colors, pastel broken mosaic you know when people make i used to make broken mosaic tables um you know whenever anything breaks the dishes you you grout them and you make them into mirrors or tables that is going to be the frame so it has a stained glass look with the mosaic frame with um a little storybook teacup in the middle with an easter lily and daffodils coming out so that is coming in the next couple of days these were the colors that i dyed for the other one and i'm sticking with these colors for the other one because again i didn't want to go full blast Easter and I didn't want to go full blast Christmas even though they're decorative eggs. I wanted to keep it neutral to be something you can use year round. So both of those kits I love and I'm completing. I'm sure I'll put out more kits this month too but I just want to be sure that I have something in place for people who like to hook a little more difficult with the number threes, a little more fine and fiddly and people who like to hook a little bit easier. The stained glass kit is going to be better this month for beginners. Thank you. So we'll talk more about that stuff, but I want to transition to talking about Nesa Russo. And I had a call with her yesterday afternoon. She is so nice. She is so nice. Um, so this morning on Ribbon Candy Hooking, my shopping page, uh, ribboncandyhooking.com, um, I started a tab and I got one done before I had to start working on coffee time stuff. One of her pieces, I think I put in, um, what was it called? Something horse. Oh, it'll come to me. I put in a horse design of hers as the first one. There's going to be, she sent me about, gosh, Nisa, I'm not sure if you're on. It was like, she said she had a, has about 100 images for me to put into the ribbon candy hooking shop. Um, so I'm going to be working on those as quickly as I can, getting those under her tab. Now, if you're just joining us with this subject, um, I got, let me show you, let me show you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dare to move the camera. I got a Nisa um, Russo piece at an antique store in Vermont last weekend, uh, not this past one, the one before, and I loved it so much I looked her up on the internet and found that she was busy doing needle felting, which is the cousin to rug hooking or punch needle. More on that in a second, but I put it up there if you can see it, that beautiful sort of Grecian, sort of Phoenician looking design, very monochrome. Oh, Nasa's on, Byzantine horse. Thank you, Nasa. So Nasa is on right now. If you have questions for her, you can direct them right to her. Um, but she did that beautiful piece, and it it turned me on to her, her work, uh, her personality. I mean, she's proper, proper artist, and she does such a different style than what I do. Thank you for the link. I've got one up so far, Nasa. I'm going to be really uh, working on it later today, and I'll just pop them all in. It's hard setting it up. It's set up. So to be continued. Um, but I want to look at this beautiful book because Nasa does needle felting, which is different if you're a total beginner it is different than rug hooking and it is different than punch needle it is different than russian punch needle um, i know most of you know what needle felting is but it's very well described in nasa's book uh, nasa also has a um oh good chrissy um she has an etsy store as well so i'll put the i think i have the link in this video i'll double check when i'm done but this is the book i want to look at now so Nasa has a completely different style, very sort of um, fantasy. I'll talk about inspirations and stuff in just a minute. But um, very sort of medieval fantasy, much very historic, very rich. And I think it lends itself so well, the style, to rug hooking and punch needle and also Russian punch needle. 
Incidentally, this will be the first series of designs that I offer that are also available as Russian punch needle. Again, Russian punch needle is that tiny, tiny, um, much thinner punch needle that looks more like a syringe, for lack of a better word. Uh, and a punch is much smaller, and you tend to see finished Russian punch needle pieces, something like this, and often people mount them to an old cutting board or a little recipe box or something like that because uh, the finished piece is typically quite small, like a little jewel, a little finished jewel. Very different scale, you know. So let's take a look at this book and some of Nace's projects. She's got everything you need to know about learning to needle felt uh, in 16 beautiful projects. So I just want to say for those of you who don't needle felt, and I don't needle felt, and I'm hoping to take a trip to Nace's so we can needle felt together and do a really nice video for you all. But um, I just happened to find um, this from years ago. This is just some roving I picked up, right? So this is like, this is wool that hasn't been refined or turned into like wool sheets, like wool fabric or wool yarn, right? It's in a different form. So you're using a different form of wool if you are doing needle, needle felting. And Nasa describes that real well in here. Let's look at let's look at the book as it unfolds. I have to show some of the images though because they're so 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 good. I mean, you can see how her needle felted tapestries are are going to be they're gorgeous the way they are. But if you are not a needle felter, if you are a needle felter, you should just go to Nasa's uh, Etsy store, and the link should be in the description. Or if you can put it in Nasa, if anybody has it handy, put it right in here so people can see it. Um, if you just want to needle felt uh, and do exactly what Nace is doing or you want one of her two books, you should go right to her Etsy store or to her website for that. But um, if you are waiting to either punch or hook them, I will have those out shortly. But you can see how these are going to lend themselves really, really well to punching and hooking. They're just colorful. They're interesting. Uh, they're full of detail. They're full of uh, things that... that carry your eye from one place to the next, right? I mean, they just have such a gorgeous look. Very, very colorful, a little bit of that stained glass feeling. I say medieval, and that's the wrong word, because when you think of medieval, you tend to think of either manuscripts, which are bright and beautiful, or very dark work. This is anything but dark work. But in part one, Nasa talks about um, all about needle felting. In other words, the how-to, the kinds of equipment that you need. It's very, thank you. It's very different equipment than we used to hook. It's like little needles and things. And you can, when you're really into it and you need to cover a lot of area, you want a needle that's more than one needle. It goes a lot faster if you've got a multi. So she shows you, and this is as opposed to a one needle, right? Uh, she shows you all of the different tools that you might get, uh, what you need to do to your felt, your wool, um, you know, in terms of before you start working with it, the pre-soaking, the prepping everything. She gives you a great glossary of what the terms mean. Now, for people that already do fiber arts, there's going to be a lot of crossover. So, uh, but if you're, if you're just approaching for the first time and you say, oh, I would rather try needle felting at this point, still fiber, still colorful, still, you know, a very tactile in my hand, I'm going to try that, then this is going to be the perfect book for you. Uh, talking about like carded fiber versus combed fiber versus bat versus roving, which is what I just showed you, versus pencil roving. Um, but she shows you all the sort of prep steps that one needs to know to participate in this particular branch of fiber art. Um, it was so nice talking to Nasa, and it was so nice um, getting to know her a little bit over Zoom for now until we can get together because um, her mom is a spinner and their family has always been into the fiber arts and it was really nice hearing her talk about she does some dyeing too um, with things that they grow in the garden that the family grows in the garden um, and she mentioned that there's always uh, tons of sawdust around from other projects and she uses that for dyeing she uses onion skins for dyeing and then her mom has a beautiful garden um, of things that you can pull out and also use for dyeing. So just like such a world, such a, and Nasa is in Vermont, so such a world of beauty and utility and inspiration. It was just a different, a different world to go into for a little while while we were chatting. It was so nice. So, and then it goes into designing your piece. And what I really like about uh, Nasa's approach, you know I'm always really clear when I talk about a book, uh, what the sort of tone of it is and what the intention is in terms of is this good for beginners this is good for beginners this is good for people who are approaching 
uh, needle felt and this is also good for people who are very good at it and would like some beautiful designs that are challenging. It's good for the whole spectrum of people. This book is also good for, you know the most important thing to me, its tone is very encouraging, positive. It's very, you got this, you can do this. Um, in this, uh, um, I'm going to read directly from uh, the book. I'm not paraphrasing. Nasa has a part that talks about designing your own piece. This is, a, this is something that's dear to my heart, too, because I love it when you try to do something that's special for you from your memory museum, uh, overcome uh, confidence, thoughts, or um, procrastination, and just start working on an original design. I think it's important to try if you have it in you, if you want to. And Nasa talks about that too, saying, inspiration may be found everywhere. You might find ideas in nature, the people or pets around you, or by leafing through books. Part of the artistic process is the time spent in contemplation. That to me sounds like a get out of jail free card for all of the time I have sit, sat around looking at books. And Nasa is saying, it's validating that by saying, that part's important. This is how you synthesize. You put all of your ideas from all of these pages of books. You're not wasting time. You're looking at things. You're getting inspired. You're taking a kind of a survey. You're putting it into a mental crucible, burning it down. And sooner or later, one idea will come out of it. Uh, and all of those hours or weeks or months that you've put into sitting looking at books or being inspired by other people's work, by other things, by uh, your family, pets, all of these kinds of things, um, it will all come to pay off, you know, because you are creating your own memory museum database in your head of images that are important to you. This is part of the process. This isn't wasted time and it's not procrastinating. It's part of the process. So she also goes on to say, I've been inspired by antique textiles, samplers, embroidery and needlepoint patterns, graft knitting patterns. You know those, the charts from like um, years ago, they were super popular in those work, work basket magazines, things like that. Um, picture books, coloring books, uh, uh, all provide endless ideas. And she says, I also got inspired for several projects in this book by looking at pictures of Middle Eastern rugs. I think that is so neat. When we were talking yesterday, I was asking her about inspiration because I hadn't gotten to that point in the book yet. And she said, I said, have you done a lot of traveling? Because you have so many images that pull from um, different regions of Europe, um, Eastern Europe, the Far East, all these different places. And she said in the past few years, she's gone to Norway and Sweden. So you'll see a very distinct sort of Scandinavian style in some of these projects, which is a little bit like a fractor style, but a little bit of a twist on it. If you can picture Scandinavian painting and toll painting, that kind of a flavor. Um, also Italy, she spent a lot of time in Italy and um, inspired by the murals, sort of uh, Italian murals and the art that came out of Pompeii. So these are things we've talked about on Coffee Time too. These are all crazy coincidence crossovers. You'll see shades of all of those things in this book. Uh, it is, it's something to agree to, right? Oh, good morning, Jill. Good to see you. Having a good day. So far, so good. Hope for you too. So she's, she's so careful about the way, um, she sets you up for success, right? She sets you up for success while designing, for designing, putting your head in the right place. I also mentioned the other day, and it's worth repeating that NASA has done um, quite a few articles for Raw Cooking Magazine, like basically one a year. Projects like, I think if this isn't the project, I showed the project the other day. Is this the same one, Nasa, as the one that's in the book, or is this a different one? This is uh, this is the flower mug rug. But I showed something from, I think it was 2000, um, was it 2020? I think it was. I couldn't find the issue from 2017. There was another one in 2017. Um, but she's done she's done a lot of writing for Raw Cooking Magazine too, needle, needle felting. Um, but she's got beautiful projects in here, a pin case, a sugar, I like the sugar skull, that reminds me of Halloween again, uh, but it's not halloween it's year-round for sure, but just beautiful projects that are very different. Um, I'm, I'm reluctant to say like with an ethnic touch because it's not, it's, it's, I wouldn't say ethnic because that has different connotations. I would say she's borrowing from so many different, as I just read, cultures, um, um, sort of uh, skill sets of different um, regions, different countries, just right across the board. There's a lot of, there's a huge mix and a huge variety in here. I really love this. Well, I have to show this one. The choir, there's some three-dimensional projects too, not just the flat project. So 
Again, if you're a beginner and you're interested in needle felting, it's nice to know that this book has projects that will get you three-dimensional, not just flat, 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 but um, three-dimensional stuff. This is uh, sort of one of them. This is the Choir Angel Ornament that I think is so, so, so sweet. I see myself doing like a hundred of these for the Christmas tree this year to put up with my um, Ukrainian eggs. And she was nice enough to put one in the box for me. I got this beautiful box from her gorgeous labeling on it, super professional, and she popped this sweet thing in there too. And I was really grateful for that. That is a nice surprise. This little character here, I haven't taken him out yet, but I absolutely love him. I'm gonna run over a little bit today, um, but we know that that's been happening. But yeah, projects like this, super, super fun. Why not? You know, talk about a little project that you can handle that's not going to make a mess, that's going to be super fun. You could do multiples of something like that. I, I mean, really, I'm probably going to get 100 of these done at Christmas. I can just see myself going nuts with that. And then beautiful things like the rug, right? The inspiration of actual rugs. So, so, so pretty. These projects are just super pretty, super different in lots of how-tos. This is a great semi-three-dimensional one, too. The bear mug rug. It looks like a bear rug, right? But it's a bear laying down and his head is three-dimensional with a little glint in his eye. So that's, oh, that was Rug Cooking Magazine 2017, the one with the floral thing. Okay, thank you. And I know you have other ones um, that are in the Rug Cooking Magazines. I've got to dig those out too. Oh, Susan, you were up at 3.30. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was up at 4. I almost got up at 4.30 out of bed, which is, it's just awful when you wake up at that time, isn't it? It's so dark and it's so long before it's dark and cheerful. It's, it's hard. I'm sorry, Susan. That's hard. Oh, Narida Rivera. Hello from Port. Hello in Puerto Rico. It's great to have you. Very big welcome to you. Good to see you. Happy Monday. So there are just some beautiful pieces. Again, this one has a dragon head that sticks up a little bit, but like a centerpiece. Very fantasy, very fun. Um, a lot of these really pull from, she was talking about, Nasa was talking about yesterday the story of uh, St. George and the dragon, which is what uh, this is pulled from, the uh, sort of idea of the princesses um, taking, their, taking their walk, they're on their way to, I guess, the dragon. But, you know, I said to her, you've got so much going on in your pieces with like the, I'll show you this in the book too because there's a, it's, it's not cut off with the, with the text, but the sort of sea monster or dragon here. Uh, the princess is on the walk. She does a lot with, and you'll notice when you go through the book, uh, she's such a good artist that without even knowing it, she's doing a lot of those composition tricks, a whole chapter on portraiture. Um, she's doing a lot of the composition tricks that are guaranteed to give you a really good, strong composition. And you notice that. I mean, I, I have a lot of school for art under my belt, which is uh, usually useless. But when I look at stuff like this, I think, yeah, it, once in a while it comes in handy. I look at Nace's pieces and I say, her um, compositions are super, super, super strong. For example, this one, the Tree of Life tapestry, there's a lot of sort of Tree of Life stuff too. Um, guardian animals, guardian snake, this kind of thing. Subjects I need to learn more about and get more into. It's, this book is filled with those kinds of subjects. This is a beautiful one that has almost like an S composition. You can see that really clearly, right? This beautiful bird, the Tree of Life tapestry. This is one of the many projects. And again, these are coming up on ribbon candy hooking for rug hookers and punch needlers and Russian punch needlers. Uh, but you can see this great strong composition. Whenever you use certain shapes like an X, an S, um, sometimes an L, uh, a Z, which is kind of the reverse of an X. See, this this has a real Z composition to it. You can see the this kind of thing. You see right down like this. And when your eye travels that way, when someone is a great artist like Nasa is, you don't even think about it. You just work like that. Um, you put those things in, and it allows your eye to go from the dragon to the castle, this whole story, um, to the knight on horseback, to the princesses, just to this boy who's picking apples off a tree. Your eye travels to all the places it's supposed to travel. The colors are so beautiful, right, Penny? Needle felting can be done on denim jeans, Cindy says, because once it's felted, it won't shrink. Excellent information. That's something we need to think about while we're shaping our other idea about um, doing some projects together. Love the composition of the jewel tones. Nasa's Tree of Life is one of your favorites. Yeah, me too, Ralda. I think it's amazing. But it's just a, go it's just a gorgeous book with gorgeous projects. Um, and again, you know, I say this a lot, but so many people write and comment on the Facebook page. Um, you know, my arm is getting tired from hooking or from... Very rich. That's the perfect word for it, Linda. 
Uh, a lot of people write, my arm's getting tired from punching or hooking, and then um, typically people will say, well, check your seat, check the way you're sitting, check your frame, check your uh, backing, check your hook. Sometimes it's just your arm is just tired, your wrist is just tired. I have a lot of stuff right here. Uh, that is weirdly suspicious and bumpy, hopefully not something really bad. But, you know, you just get bumps and, and pains in different places from doing repeat motion. And we, we always say to each other, you know, for, equipment aside, sometimes think about punching as opposed to hooking, right? The opposite motion. And I would add to that, also think about to give your arm or your wrist or whatever your sort of physical complaints might be, also think about giving needle felting a try because again, that's a third thing in the bag of tricks that's different, that you're still making pictures with fiber, you're making pictures with beautiful wool, um, you know, and maybe it gives your arm a rest if you have problems with other things. Just another choice for you, right? So I'm gonna end in a minute, but I also wanted to say, I was super inspired because I, um, I got this set of silk, um, silk yarn. Um, from Nasa and it's super super thin but look at those colors this is her own color palette her naturally dyed I wanted to show you this too sorry I put my boobs right in the camera um, I'm gonna do you know when Nasa puts a color set like this together and I said to her yesterday um, because we're, we're working on a contract so of course she's getting paid for her incredible work um, talent inspiration all of these things that she's sharing with us I'm gonna put this set I'm gonna make this set um, as wool if you want to punch with it or hook with it in the exact same colors. And I'm going to start under Nace's tab whenever she has a yarn set um, that she's put together because I wouldn't put these colors together. This is her. Um, I do different kinds of colors. This is her. I'm going to try to replicate these and come out with a set and they'll be under her tab too because you can see that these colors look like this. And so this is all her. So be looking out, not just for her patterns, but her yarn combos, because I think it's super handy to, I, I just love the idea. I, I put out lots of yarn sets, as you know, but I love the idea of borrowing from someone else's imagination and bag of tricks to come out with different yarn sets because they will always be different than mine. And you should have a choice. You should have lots of variety and lots of choice. So I'm also looking at her colors. That's one of the reasons I want to visit Nasa. Look at your colors and put more sets together because you do much more sort of earthy, embroidery-driven colors than I do. I tend to go cuckoo. Um, and I'm super inspired by this. So with these yarns that I got from her, the silks, I'm actually going to do... Uh, hopefully later this week, start a Russian needle punch. And I will do lots of videos on that. I chose this design. Nasa, what's this one called? Do you, do you know off the top of your head? I'm in the middle of transferring it onto fiber tape and then onto weaver's cloth. Because when you're working with the uh, Russian punch needle, the much smaller scale punch needle, you want to work on weaver's cloth. That's going to come out the best. It's teeny, 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 tiny. Um, so uh, I'm working on that. And then I'm going to move to probably in a couple of weeks, putting one of her larger patterns on a bigger backing and, and hooking that for myself. So those two projects I have coming up, those will be super, super fun. I feel like I was going to say something else, but it's gone. Um, but in any case, I'm going to work this afternoon on getting some orders out that came in over the weekend. Um, I have a Zinnia's one from um, late last week I've got to get out. I've got to get out a bunch of things. And then as soon as I can, I'm going to sit down and get back on the computer. Swedish Sampler. Thanks, Nasa. This one's called Swedish Sampler. Um, so I'm going to be working that in the Russian punch needle, much smaller. And as I say, I'm going to be um, putting that onto weaver's cloth, and I'll be doing a lot of videos. For those of you who haven't done Russian punch, the much smaller version of punch, not the Oxford punch, um, the much smaller version, I'll be doing lots of videos to walk you through that if you're interested in starting up um, that sort of branch of punching. So in the meantime, busy at work and be looking for those to pop up as soon as I have a handful of those up on ribboncandyhooking.com. I will put them up on our Facebook page, which is Rug Cooking and Punch Needle Club, and you can start browsing them there. But just know in your head that this week I am super actively and aggressively getting um, Nace's images. They're all beauties getting them onto the site so you can see them all. And if you, if you again, want to needle felt them, you go directly to NASA, to her website, to her Etsy store. But if you want to rug hook or punch them, um, give me a couple of days and I will get those all up there. You'll see your full range of choices. And you know there everything's always available as a kit. You just need to email me. But those images will all be there for punch, uh, hooking, and also Russian needle punch. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Nasa, thank you so much for coming on. Um, 
layers of design. Yeah, for more videos. I know I need to get back to doing videos that are not coffee time. Um, I was having some ideas about maybe getting some help from people, getting some help with computer stuff, getting some help with a lot of stuff so it could free me up to just do things that I that are more unique uh, and less monkey work, you know, busy, busy work. So I, I'm, I'm trucking, I'm working on it. But it was great seeing you all this morning. Try Russian Punch on muslin broadcloth. Oh, okay, less bounce. Great tip, Sheila. Sheila just said, try, if you're doing the Russian Punch, try it on muslin broadcloth. I'm going to try those two, too. I already have my um, weaver's cloth ready to go. But I love, I love that. Thank you for giving the option. That's really smart. And I know that you know, Sheila. Oh, Ralda, I am busy. But you know what? I had to remind myself this weekend about that thing, about making time for the things that are important. Um, and I just have to put that into the front of my mind because, you know, in the spring, you, you get this kind of false, as soon as the weather turns like it is, I hope for you too, you get this false kind of energy because you feel like, the world is your oyster, you know, it's all coming full circle, the cycle of life, the new season, new energy. Um, and it is kind of a fake energy. It will burn out and you'll end up hitting a wall. So I am trying to remind myself about more overarching philosophy things like got to make time for this, got to make time for that, got to get the yin and the yang a little bit better, got to get everything balanced out a little bit better. Um, so hopefully you have those thoughts too and you're getting all your stuff in order because it would be nice to clear some time to do some projects that aren't about keeping or making and having but about giving to someone else it would be nice it's a nice time of year to be thinking about those kinds of projects too cindy so i'll look for your email have a great afternoon everybody i i can't even remember what i plan to do tomorrow but i will post it before tomorrow and i will be here with you and we will look at something fun and do something fun tomorrow oh i know it we're gonna we're gonna i'm gonna save it i'm gonna save it um i'm, I'm gonna attempt a uh uh, a restoration on a rug and I know I'm going to get uh, some mixed feelings about whether I should even attempt it or not but I'll show you that tomorrow I'm going to be taking out Judy Taylor's book save that rug for a minute and then we might move on to um, I want to show you another uh, punch book I found it's sort of a Russian punch book and then I want to look at Jean Shepard's book on Prati we never got to that so we'll do all of those things this week have a great afternoon universal struggle to balance I know atlas right a little bit of atlas and a little bit of this have a great afternoon, everybody. I will see you in the morning. Nasa, thank you so much for being on To Be Continued, all of those beautiful designs coming and for you. In the meantime, check out Nasa's site. You can see all of her des designs and her need needle felting. I need some coffee. I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great afternoon. Take care. <laughs> oh, Cindy. Uh, if you're still there, Cindy, ribbon candy hooking at gmail.com.